And so in this relationship, it's not just a, Jesus is my buddy. Uh, no, Jesus is my, my Lord. He's my leader. And in that, I, I want to receive direction. And through the Holy Spirit, he will guide us in ways of taking the kingdom of heaven, the ways of the kingdom of heaven, and living them out here on earth. That is the goal, is that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Welcome to the Loving God, Loving People podcast, where we talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus in our everyday lives and how, in the end, all that matters is God and people. Here's today's episode. Well, hey, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. Today, we're going to be having a conversation about prayer. Now, Chad, some people have observed that there seems to be something going on with Sun Valley where... Chad went to London, and now he's getting all charismatic on us, and uh, and is willing really? to help. Somebody you. said that. Some a few people have said well, said that. That's years ago. Um, what what does all that mean? Talk about your journey <laughs> with the Holy Spirit, your journey with prayer, and just the approach with prayer, and and what is it that you want that you've been experiencing that you want others to experience when it comes to their prayer life. Is that an open-ended question? Is that broad enough for you? Well, that's pretty. That's pretty broad. Yeah. And I'm trying to decide which part of that I, I want to respond to. Um, my journey with prayer. That's what you're asking yeah. me. Um, hopefully, I'm I'm growing in it. Yeah. You know, and with that, I can help the church grow in it. And so, you know, am I getting more charismatic? Well, it depends on what you mean by that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, probably. I, I really want people to experience the presence of God. If that's what somebody means by charismatic, you know, do I want that? Do I want that for people? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bible is is not a dead old book that has, you know, some wisdom in it. That The Bible is a timeless book mm-hmm. that is living and active and sharper than a two-edged sword. And the Holy Spirit still is at work. And the Holy Spirit reveals the scriptures to us supernaturally, he takes it past our minds and into our hearts. I, I don't just want people to know about God. I want them to have knowledge of God, mm-hmm. which means I want them to have a real relationship with him and experience him. So if people think that's charismatic, so be it. Um, and if that's you, I, I want that for you. And I'm sorry that your faith is dead, cold, old, and old. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be living yeah. and active, and God is alive and well, and he wants you to know him personally. So um, I sound defensive. I don't, I don't mean that to be defensive, but yeah. I, I hear I, it as I, passionate. I, this I, is something yeah. that, yeah. I, I want people to experience the living God. Uh, we have a Savior who still saves. His name's Jesus. His resurrection power is made available to us and through us by his spirit. And so, yeah, he still does miracles and he still changes lives and he's still active. He's mm-hmm. alive and well. And yes, I want our people to experience that. And prayer is at the core of that. Yeah. So if you had to define prayer, what, do you have like a simple yeah. definition? Yeah. Prayer is conversation with God. Mm. Um, most people think prayer is talking to God, mm-hmm. and it would include that, mm-hmm. but it should also include listening. So so anytime we communicate, anytime there's conversation, there's talking and there's listening, right? Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's two-way. And prayer is meant to be that. So we talk to God, obviously, when we pray. But we also want to listen to God uh, through the Bible and through the Holy Spirit. And so it's funny, you know, if you talk to God, you're considered spiritual. If you hear from God, you might be crazy. Uh Uh, But reality is prayer is conversation with God. Yeah. So I love it because the disciples... Obviously, they see Jesus has this pattern of prayer in his life. Prayer is a regular part of what he does, and um, you see it recorded. He'd get up early in the morning sometimes. He would go off and say, hey, I'm just going to go spend some time with God, which is interesting because Jesus is God in the Robert, flesh. Robert, are you a Mark 135 <laughs> Christian? Yes, Dr. Bennett. Yeah, <laughs> early in the morning, Jesus went out to pray. For people doc, that have doc, no context, <laughs> they're like, what is happening on the podcast right now? Yeah, Dr. Bennett was a mentor of mine. He's, <laughs> he's with Jesus now. He was from South Carolina. He talks like this. And so every once in a while, I'll do Dr. Bennett voice to Robert. Mark 135 says Jesus got up early and went out to pray. Mm-hmm. So. so his disciples are seeing this pattern, and they they ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. And, and he teaches them how to pray. And we have in the Sermon on the Mount, he teaches us how to pray. And if you go to Matthew 5, 6, and 7, you have the Beatitudes, and then you have in the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord's Prayer, as we call it. Uh, and it's interesting to me because when Jesus, in another one of the Gospels, he's teaching them how to pray, he gets the Lord's Prayer wrong. I mean, 
doesn't he know the Lord's prayer? It's his prayer, but he says it a little bit differently. And sometimes when he prays, he prays it a little differently. And so you realize he's not giving us a formula. Some people take the Lord's prayer and go, I just need to do that formula and say those exact words. Like it's an incantation. Jesus is teaching us how to be relational. In prayer. Yeah. He, he's teaching us something much broader than just say these words every time you pray. Well, you, you wrote a book about the Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. Uh, Please go out and get the book. It's Upside really, Down Crown. Yeah, it'll help you. Upside Down There's Crown. There's a new book coming out next summer. Oh. And I okay. talk about prayer in there as well because it's okay. kind of spiritual foundation, uh, kind of Christianity 101. What does it mean to follow Jesus? Looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah. But right now, for everyone listening, you can go on Amazon and order Upside Down Crown by Robert Watson. There you go. Thanks for the plug. Yeah. You talk about the Lord's Prayer in that mm-hmm. book. Uh, so what are some things that you would point out? Because yeah. he, he, to your point, he's not saying pray this way every time. Correct. He's saying this then is how you should pray. Yes. And so what you have in the Lord's Prayer are the principles of good prayer. Mm-hmm. And he gives some guidance on it, too. He says, you know, some people, they want to be just impressive with their words and how big a words they can use in prayer and how, you know, demonstrative they can be. And Jesus is like, God's not impressed by that. Like that, that's not what God is after. He's after our hearts in that because it is relational. And so he says, don't worry about, you know, saying all these words and being like the religious leaders at the time that would make a big scene out of their, their prayers. Um, you want to be like the person who humbly enters into the presence of God. Yeah. And when he teaches us things like praying, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, where we're, it's, again, that posture of humility of I want to submit my life under the leadership of Jesus. And so in this relationship, it's not just a, Jesus is my buddy. Uh, no, Jesus is my my Lord. He's my leader. And in that, I, I want to receive direction. And through the Holy Spirit, he will guide us in ways of taking the kingdom of heaven, the ways of the kingdom of heaven, and living them out here on earth. That is the goal, is that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And something that a lot of people don't realize, Jesus talks about more than pretty much anything else. He talks about the kingdom of heaven. It's at the very top. Everywhere you see throughout the the gospels, Jesus talking, he uses that word kingdom again and again and again. And kingdom is not about going to heaven one day after we die. It's about the ways of heaven living out on earth. Uh, When God created the Garden of Eden, you have this overlap between earth and heaven and God's presence is there. Something happened with the fall of mankind and now there's a separation. Well, now heaven came to us in the person of Jesus and he wants us to pray that the ways of heaven would be here on earth. And one day when Jesus does restore all things, it's not that we again go off to heaven. It's that heaven comes down to us and there's this new Jerusalem, new heaven, new earth. And we're dwelling in this garden like city, kind of like Genesis repeated now, but it's this fulfillment and God's presence is with us. Uh, But when we pray, we're praying for the ways of the kingdom to exist now here on earth. And so we do, we pray for other people. Um, We talk about our sin. We confess things that are going on in our own heart, ways that we know are contrary to the kingdom of God. Uh, We talk to God about that and we ask for forgiveness as we forgive people who've wronged us Mm -hmm. and we bring healing and we bring grace. Again, these are the ways of heaven by forgiving people in our lives. That's a, that's a heaven relationship move. That is, no, that's the kingdom I'm a part of. That's the king who I follow. And so when I choose to forgive people, I'm allowing heaven to exist here on earth through that relationship by doing things the way Jesus did. So yeah. those are some examples. Yeah. Yeah. So the Lord's Prayer, the principles of prayer are there. Mm-hmm. It's about experiencing God in his kingdom. I have an acronym. You ready? Let's hear it. Okay. So I grew up, I, somebody taught me acts, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. That's great. I prefer tacos. In tacos, uh, I, I see that biblically. If you look at the tabernacle and how God I created— I love tacos. Who doesn't love tacos? Uh, but it's Is the today same. Tuesday? What's today? Monday. Today is Monday. Okay. It's taco Tuesday. It could be Taco Monday. Okay. Go ahead. It's, well, this comes out on a Tuesday. It's right. Taco Tuesday if you're hearing this one. It just came out live. Oh, that's right. Great. The podcast is always released on Tuesday. So tacos. Tacos. Thanksgiving, adoration. Thanksgiving is thanking God for what he's done. Mm -hmm. Adoration is praising God for who he is. Uh, It says that when you had the tabernacle, we would enter the gates with thanksgiving. We would enter his courts with praise. Uh, But then you have this altar where animals are being sacrificed because sin requires sacrifice. Mm. And so there's the reality of the sin of the people of Israel because you have these animal sacrifices happening with the old sacrificial system which Jesus eventually, he fulfills that by being the one sacrifice once and for all, ultimate, not to cover sin, but to actually take sin away. 
Um, but you had confession, and then you had this holy place where the priests would minister on behalf of the people and care for the people of Israel through their ministry in the, the holy place. And then you had the holy of holies, and that's where the high priest would meet with God kind of face to face. And you had Moses do that uh, with the very first tabernacle. But you have adoration, uh, which is praising God for who he is. So thanksgiving, adoration, C, confession, O is others, and S is self. And to your point, in all of that, there is a back and forth. It's, it's relational. Uh, but those are all different components of prayer. And sometimes we just focus on self. We just do the last one. Tacos, thanksgiving, yep. adoration, confession, others, self. Correct. Love that. Yep. Yeah. So sometimes with our kids, because we're teaching our kids, here's how you pray. And it's not just, you know, you like to talk about the Spice Girls prayer. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really really want. want. Um, That's what we naturally go to. Yeah. But we want our kids to grow in faith and grow in their prayer life and how they talk with God and what they talk with God about. And so we started introducing these other things. So we took Scrabble pieces, put them in a bag, and it was tacos. And then there were some blank ones, and we'd shake it up, and they'd reach in, and whatever letter they got, if it was Thanksgiving, they would pray a prayer of Thanksgiving. We'd go around, and we'd pray whatever letter we got it's so good out of the Scrabble bag. But that's just a way to help you begin to grow and not get kind of stuck in a rut when it comes to your prayer life. I absolutely love that idea, and I'm just going to tell you, I feel like a really crappy parent right now, but <laughs> I love that idea. So you took Scrabble letters, mm-hmm. T-A-C-O-S, yep. mix them up, and then whichever family member drew that one, they were responsible for that part of the prayer. That's right. Yep. Love it. That is that is so good. And the blank ones, you could pick whichever one you wanted. Yeah. So, and the what I found was tricky. So, you know, you got your ten year old getting confession. Like, I don't know, what's something that that maybe you want God to work on in your life? Oh, and you got to think a little bit longer, and it takes a little more vulnerability. But if prayer is relational, being vulnerable is part of that relationship. Absolutely. And and so, yeah, it's a little awkward at times, but it's actually good for us. Yeah. So let's just walk through tacos for a second. Mm -hmm. So we said that that prayer is conversation with God. So Thanksgiving adoration, that's us talking to God. Mm -hmm. We're we're thanking him. We're praising him. But then we get to uh, confession, others, and self. Mm -hmm. So conversation with God could be as simple as in your time of confession when you're vulnerable, just ask God, is there anything, Holy Spirit, that you want to say to me about this? Yeah, there's the and then you, and then Psalm, you search me. Yeah. Search me, know me. See yeah. if there's any way that's wicked within me and just listen. Yeah. So I would um I was asking a question, now I'm taking the ball back yeah. for a second. But I, I would during confession, just just and I and I do this, uh, God, is there anything you want to say to me about this? And I just wait. Mm-hmm. And the things that come to mind that are encouraging, comforting, and helpful. Those things are from the Lord. Mm-hmm. So if what comes to mind is something harsh, judgmental, self-hate, that's not from the Lord. That's a different voice. So when the Holy Spirit speaks, this is 1 Corinthians 14. You can look it up. I think it's verse 3. The Holy Spirit uh, will be encouraging, comforting, and, and helpful. And so you just listen. Mm-hmm. So thanksgiving, adoration, confession, others. You pray for others. God, is there anything you want to say to me about this? Mm-hmm. And you just listen. And he might want you to send a text of encouragement. He might want you to do something. He might want you to stop doing something. Mm-hmm. And then when you pray for self, same thing. You pray about those things. God, what do you want to say to me about this? And you just listen. And uh, one good practice is you can have a pen and paper and the things that come to mind, you just write them down. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes for me, scripture will come to mind or a uh, type of scripture. And I'll, I'll use, um, I'll, I'll give everybody this, BibleGateway.com. You can just put it in the search engine. Mm-hmm. I think I'm supposed to be encouraging. And then you just look, put encouraging in the search engine, and all these verses will come up on encouragement. Some of those kinds of things. So I, I think within the TACOs acronym, I really like that. Maybe when we do confession, when we do others, when we do self, we just ask God, what do you want to say to me about this? Mm-hmm. And we just give him space to talk. When you say you'll pause and you'll wait, mm-hmm. how long do you pause and wait? Uh, usually a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes things immediately start coming to mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, how do I know if it's from the Lord or if it's from me? Well, if it's in agreement principally with what the Bible would say, then that's from the Lord. Mm-hmm. So even if I came up with it, it's still ultimately from the Lord. So that's okay. Uh, if it's apart from the Bible, if it's uh, not in the realm of, of grace and, and truth, 
then uh, it's it's not from the Lord. The things that, again, the Spirit's going to tell you, or they're going to be encouraging, comforting, and, and helpful, uh, there's, going to be, there's going to be guidance there. Uh, the Holy Spirit is gentle. Um, he doesn't yell at you. Mm-hmm. You know, people always tell these stories, and then God smacked me with a two-by-four. God's, God's never done yeah. that to your me. Your circumstances might have smacked you your, with a two-by-four. Two the consequences yeah. of your dumb decisions smacked you. Yeah. Uh, your Heavenly Father is, uh, is gentle and kind to His children, mm-hmm. okay? Is the wrath of God coming? Yes, but not over His children. Mm-hmm. His children are those who have received Jesus, and the wrath of God will pass over them because Jesus covers them in His blood. So... Yeah, when God speaks, he's gentle and, and kind and helpful and encouraging and comforting. And so, yeah, I'll wait uh, a minute or two. And how, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of times within 30 seconds, I have, to, I have to choose to stop thinking. Okay. So I have to quiet my mind. Yeah. How do you do that? Uh, I intentionally tell myself, I'm going to do the best I can right now, Holy Spirit, to just stop thinking. Mm-hmm. And would you bring what you want to my mind? Do you focus on a thought? Do you focus on a verse? Do you imagine something in your mind? How do you keep that, that kind well, of focus? For me, when I pause and I listen, it's easy for me to be like, okay, tacos. Oh man, I wonder if we're having tacos tonight. Where's the best taco I've <laughs> yeah, ever yeah, gotten? Yeah. You know, and I'm, my brain's going all these different places. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm praying. Well, some things that pop in your brain, um, it's okay to just pray about those things. Mm-hmm. So I, I think what we do is we way overcomplicate prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, when my children were small, you know, they weren't thinking about necessarily what they were saying. Um, I wasn't picking on them if they said something wrong. They're young. They're immature, right? I kind of expect that. Mm-hmm. God's that way with us. In fact, in Romans, it says the Holy Spirit fixes your prayer. So even if you say something stupid, the Holy Spirit's like, well, Father, <laughs> Robert said this, but, <laughs> but, but what he meant to say, yeah. right, is this. And so the Holy Spirit prays on, on our behalf. And uh, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. So we don't have to worry about those things. I I think um, in the sense of listening, what I try to do, and we'll practice it right now. So I can literally pray right now for you. Mm -hmm. Um, So I could say, Father, so we'll just do it. Let's do it. But we'll just practice. Father, uh, what is something that you want to tell Robert? And so right now, I'll just kind of empty my mind for a second. Then I'll just wait and see what comes to mind. So the podcast is going to be quiet here for a few seconds. Okay, here's what came (laughs) came to my mind. Uh, He loves you. Uh, He's proud of you. Um, He's for you. Those are the three things that came to mind. Mm -hmm. Well, how do I know that's from the Lord? Well, because the Bible says that he loves, Mm -hmm. that he finds delight in his children, and in Romans, it says, if God is for us, then who can be against us? So I, I know that's from the Lord. Mm-hmm. Well, did that come from me or did that come from God? Well, for me personally, just now, I did clear my mind. And those are the three things that came in. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just kind of that practice. Yeah. Um, you know, and every once in a while, it's something strange. And even when I'm praying for somebody like I just did with you, I'll be like, this just came to mind. Does this mean anything to mm-hmm. you? And sometimes they'll go, no, or sometimes they'll say, you know what, that totally does. It's weird to even brought that up, right? Yeah. So it's, it's those kinds of things. But that works personally, too. Mm-hmm. Lord, Lord what, do you, what do you want to tell me? So um, this morning, um, I, was, I, I, I preached this past weekend, so we pre-record these podcasts. This past weekend, I preached on not being offended. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, I had this moment in the sermon where I'm like, strangers rarely offend me anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't care. But my family still offends me, mm-hmm. right? Because I care about what they think. And so a family member yesterday offended me. And uh, it, it came up in my mind this morning. Mm-hmm. And so I was kind of griping about it while I was getting ready, right? And then I had my little prayer time this morning. I was praying in my truck on the way here. Mm-hmm. And I did what I just did with you. God, is there anything you want to speak to me about? And here's what came to mind. Well, you talked about getting over it <laughs> this past week. Why, why were you rehearsing mm-hmm. the offense yesterday in your mind and what bothered you about it mm-hmm. and what you wish you would have said and didn't say? Those kinds of things. Why are you doing that? But it was gentle and kind. It wasn't a, you mm-hmm. suck, Chad. It was a, hey, man, why are you doing that? Mm-hmm. Right? So I was like, because I don't practice everything that I preach, right? And then I'm like, you're right, Holy Spirit. I choose to, with your help, get over it. Yeah. I'm moving on, letting it go. So those, those kinds of things, it's, it's really that simple. Yeah. I love, the, I love the guardrails around it to identify, to know, is this from the Lord or is this 
my own thought is this uh, just a, a random thing that came across my mind? Am I yeah. hearing something that somebody else has said that's not from God, but I've heard it enough times, I'm believing it. I, I love the guardrails of, is it is it helpful? Is it encouraging? Um, is it biblical? Does this line up with what I see in Scripture? Which is why it's important, uh, I believe, in prayer to also spend time in God's Word. God wants to speak to you, and He wants to do that through prayer, and He wants to do that through His Word, mm -hmm. that God's given us His Word so that we can learn His voice, so that we can understand and discern, oh, that's that's a lie from the enemy, or that's something from the world, or that's something from my own thought. Like, this is something that is a, a kingdom thought, a God thought, a biblical sound thought here, because um, he's, he's not going to contradict himself. Yeah. He's not going to speak in a way that you go, man, that's totally different than what I read in the Bible from God, yeah. or that's totally out of the character of Jesus. It's going to be in line with the character of Jesus. Yeah. I've had moments where what came to mind is you need to text your son today and mm -hmm. tell him that you love him. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Yep. Well, I just saw him that morning, yep. but I'm, I'm just going to do it because I don't know what's going on in that moment in his life. I, I, I've, I've tried to, through the years when that happens, to do it right then, Yeah. Uh, just because you never know. What God is doing. So, so those kinds of things, I, I think you just jump on quickly, you know, you're, you're immediately obedient. I had a moment one time when, since God was telling me, Hey, go confess this to Lindsay, go talk to Lindsay about something. And you were like, I'm I, doing that. Yeah. I knew it was from God. Cause I'm like, that's not my idea. I think it's a terrible <laughs> idea. Yeah. Um, but did that. And in that experience, this great moment of intimacy as we work through this thing together and, um, grew in our relationship significantly in that moment. And it's because there was a challenge. So it's not that it's always just, hey, good job, you're doing great. Sometimes it's, hey, you need to bring this out into the light. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit will do that with me as well. And um, I'm always terrified to do whatever that thing is. And sometimes it's, hey, reach out to this person or text this person or do something for this person. A lot of times I'm nervous, uh, not because God's not good or because I need to be afraid. It's just because, oh, it's a step that I wouldn't have taken on my own. But then when I do it, I look back and go, Oh, so good. And yeah. I'm so glad I did that thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, maybe somebody's in that place where they feel like they know what God wants them to do. They're just afraid to do it. Sure. And my encouragement would be take that step. Let, let's talk about this for a moment because mm -hmm. sometimes people will hear me say, you know, it's helpful, comforting, encouraging if, it, if it's from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, what does he talk to you about your sin? Yes, he talks to me about my sin, but it's comforting, mm -hmm. encouraging, and, and helpful. So... It's if, not shame. Well, yeah, yeah. If God speaks to you about your sin, um, he's not trying to guilt trip you or shame you. That's actually the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the name Satan literally means the accuser. Mm -hmm. uh, he accuses us before God both day and night. But Jesus stands in our defense. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful picture. But shame and guilt do not come from God. And I'm sorry that the church has got that wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say what we say. The message of the Bible, primarily the message of the gospel, is not shame on you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's shame off you yeah. uh, in the name of Jesus. That's what he came to do is deliver us. So it, there's a difference between uh, shame, guilt, and righteous, good, Holy Spirit conviction. Yeah. Okay. Shame and guilt is you suck. You've always sucked. You're always going to suck. Mm -hmm. You're a loser. Right. You did this. 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 You scumbag. Mm -hmm. That's guilt and shame. That's not God. The Holy Spirit is going to say, hey, you, you probably need to work on this. Mm -hmm. um, why don't why don't you tell Lindsay mm -hmm. about this sin? Why don't you share it with somebody that you trust? You know, a name's going to come to mind. Um, a lot of times for me, it, it's, hey, you ran off at the mouth. Mm -hmm. Um with that person and you hurt them and you're unaware of it and you need to go ask for forgiveness. I get mm -hmm. that one a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't realize in my position or role how heavy things are that I say. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I'm still a 15-year-old kid and I need to wake up and I'm the lead pastor of a large church and I'm 52 years old and mm -hmm. grow up. So a lot of times the Holy Spirit will say, you hurt them. Mm -hmm. You need to go back and, and yeah. make that right. And, and hopefully most of the time I do that. But it's never a you suck, you're terrible you know, you're always mm -hmm. going to be terrible. It's much more, here's what you need to do about this. Yeah. And, and it's convicting, right? And, and, and many times, it doesn't mean that I don't feel bad. I still feel bad. There's, mm -hmm. there's a godly sorrow. That's the word I was, yeah. But, but it's, it's godly sorrow is not I'm terrible. Godly sorrow is God, you're right. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to change that 
I'm, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going I'm to fight this particular sin. And usually when, when you tell God, I'm going to fight this particular sin, he'll tell you how to do that. And most of the time you won't want to do it mm-hmm. because it'll be, I want you to tell your wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want you to share that with, with a friend, you know, those kinds of things. And that's scary. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, following Jesus is not for the weak. Well, there's a leadership component to it that. It requires courage. Yeah. To your, to your point, godly sorrow leads to repentance. So there's a... God is incredibly loving. The Holy Spirit, you will experience more love listening to the Holy Spirit and in creating that openness in your prayer to go, okay, is there anything you want to speak to me? You will experience more love than you could possibly imagine. I've experienced that in times with the Holy Spirit. Um, but he also is going to lead you, but he's going to do it in a loving way. And so, again, it's not guilt, shame, that's the enemy. Uh, but there are times he's going to challenge you to do something. And it's for your good to trust him in that. He's not going to lead you anywhere that's for your bad. It's always going to be for your good. And so to trust him with that. But it takes courage. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, it's interesting that you chose the, you know, he told you to tell your wife. Uh, for me, things that I'm really ashamed of, I mean, that, that's the hardest thing for me to do. Mm-hmm. And yet a lot of times that's what he calls me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I do, you know, there's an intimacy that's formed there. It doesn't mean the conversation is easy or people don't mm-hmm. get their feelings hurt or there's not a fight at mm-hmm. first. But in my scenario, because I'm married to somebody that's trying to follow Jesus too, even though we might go through the tunnel of chaos, the, the other side of the tunnel is good. Yeah. Um, and we're closer on the other side. So, yeah, you can trust God. Those things are, are really really important. Yeah. And uh, I would say you're also closer relationally to God when you go through those things. Absolutely. When you trust him and you go, oh, he's for my good. <laughs> I yeah. see now the fruit well, of what he was leading me into, that it was for my benefit. It's for the betterment of that relationship. It's for the betterment of my life, my ministry, my work, my parenting, whatever it might be. And it's good for my relationship with God because now there's a little bit of this give and take trust thing where I'm actually taking real steps of faith. And it's through that faith that I experience God's grace. That's the avenue through which we get, you know, Ephesians 2. It's by grace you're saved through faith. Faith is trusting God and taking whatever that next step is. And in that, we experience his grace in different parts of our lives, different relationships. We go, I'm going to do that again next time around when God says, I want you to do, okay. And you just get get into practice of doing that, and you realize how much God really loves us. Hmm. I've also had moments where I'm about to say something, and I've heard the Holy Spirit go, don't do that. Hmm. And I'd be like, not right now, Holy Spirit. I got this. <laughs> and then I reap the consequences yeah. of the dumb thing that I said, mm-hmm. right? And I'm like, oh, well, I guess you knew better, mm-hmm. right? So we have that option too. And the Holy Spirit doesn't get mad. He gets quenched. I mean, there's mm-hmm. times where he'll be like, okay, have it your way. Well, it's like when you have the navigation on in your car and you're driving somewhere. and You, you can pay. Keep, yeah. You can keep going straight even though it says turn left. turn and Okay, make a U-turn. Nope, I'm going to keep going. Okay. Now make a U-turn at this spot. No, I'm going to keep going. Like, you can continue to quench the Holy Spirit to your point. You can ignore. You can do all that. But at some point, you're going to go, man, this path sucks. <laughs> I'm on. Like, I want, to get, I want to get to the right destination. Well, then you make the U-turn. You start following what God's calling you to. Yeah. All right. We're out of time. Did we talk about tacos? We did. Was that this podcast? That was this podcast. Yeah, I thought so. I'm it, like, we did the tacos yeah, thing just a while this, ago, didn't this we? This is almost a two-parter if we don't end it like right now. Yeah, well, we started talking about listening. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really want to encourage people. I, I think that acrostic, um, acrostic, that acronym yeah, that Robert gave us uh, is really good. And I, I would, if that's new for you, I would practice that. Thanksgiving, adoration, confession, other self. And then when you do confession, others and self, I would, I would wait on the Lord a little bit. Mm-hmm. Ask him to speak to you and the things that you're speaking to him about and, and see how he guides you. Yeah. Robert, you want to pray for us about prayer? Yeah. Cool. And wherever you're at, if you're driving, keep your eyes open. If you're working out and listening to the podcast, or you're sitting, uh, maybe just in a posture of receiving, want to lift your palms up. And, uh, and let's take a moment to actually just wait. Come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, is there anything you want to speak to us as we're we're here in just a, a posture of listening and receiving. Is there anything you want to say to us? If 
there's something that came to mind, maybe an encouragement, um, you just take a moment and just say thank you. Holy Spirit, thanks for loving us. Would you help us to grow in this area of listening? Would you speak to us? Would you lead us? Would you guide us? Mm -hmm. We trust you. And we're grateful that, that you want to be with us. And so we, we pray for our prayers, that they would be not one directional, but that we would pause and we would listen. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Loving God, Loving People podcast. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this conversation, we'd love it if you like this video, leave us a comment, and even share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people meet, know, and follow Jesus. And lastly, you are always welcome to join us each week for one of our services right here live on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.